Hi, Mel. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good. Why don't you go ahead and start by reading? Uh, I think they're going to have you read your question, and then we can kind of talk through it. Yes, absolutely. All right. Hi, Mel. My name is Katrina. Thank you for all your podcasts. They have saved me in the past year. Let me explain. In July 2022, just days before my 25th birthday and last year of law school, my boyfriend of five years dumped me. To say that this was out of nowhere would be an understatement. But looking back, I am sure there were signs that the end was coming. My future crumbled right before my eyes. I was numb for the first three to four months. I've done a lot of work since then. I've fostered many relationships and started a bunch of new hobbies, each requiring patience and confidence, two skills I really needed to work on. I need your help on what to do next. The state I live in has been my home all my life, and as far as I know, it's where my ex still resides. I'm unsure if it's the breakup, the last year of law school ending, or the fact that I truly have nothing tying me down here anymore, but this place no longer feels warm to me. Most of my friends are engaged and beginning to start their lives in a chapter I can no longer relate to. I'm thinking of moving to a state that has everything I love. However, a part of me knows that if I leave, the chances of me getting back together with my ex become slimmer. A brilliant and well-experienced woman once said, one decision can change the trajectory of your life forever. So I hope you can help me figure out what decision to make or at least ways to make this grueling decision. Thanks, Mel. Okay. So I think that this is a very short coaching session. <laughs> okay. Because I think you know the decision. Uh, yeah, I think I do too. So when you just kind of went, oh, I think I do too. <laughs> I want to tell you something about decisions. It's interesting because especially since you've just graduated from law school and you've been using that big, amazing, powerful brain of yours uh, to get through law school and you now think like a lawyer, you're very analytical. But the kind of decisions that change your life are not made upstairs in that lawyer analytical brain do you know where in your body you can feel what the decision is yeah i think it's my heart i think um i mean there's definitely a part of me i left out a few things there his parents have a love story that they ended up back together after they broke up and after they had separate lives so i think subconsciously i'm hoping that that's the case, but I know my time here, I live in Indianapolis. I, I think my time here has come to an end just because I, I don't want to be living in a place where I'm worried I'm going to bump into him or worried I'd see him on a date with someone else. Like that's not a life I want to live. And mm. that's not something I want to have in the back of my mind everywhere yeah. I go. Yep. Um, I think there's a bigger reason that has nothing to do with him. So I want you to tell me why you want to move. I mean, fuck him for a minute. Like, what, <laughs> why do you want to go somewhere else? Yeah. Um, there are many reasons. I, I've lived in Indiana my entire life. And, mm -hmm. and I think this breakup has shown me, if it's shown me, I mean, it's shown me so many things, but one thing is that you have one life to live. And I just don't think I'm supposed to live here for my entire life. And it's, it's something that's deep in me. And it was deep in me before we broke up. I thought about moving. I wanted to move. And I, so it's just, it's only accelerated it, but I have parent guilt because they both, they live here. And I think that they'll, they they don't intend on moving anywhere, but maybe if I can show them that it, it's possible, you can do it, you can start over somewhere new, that maybe it'll give them the confidence to do so. So I, I agree with you. I, I, there is, there are reasons that are more personal than just him and that, and that I know from my own self-growth, it's a necessary next step. 
Yeah, I think you want to make the decision not only from your heart, and I'll coach you through how to make the decision and how to read the energy of your heart, mm -hmm. but you can make this decision either because you want to move away from something or because you feel called to something. Do those two places feel different to you? I think it's it's 60% well, being called somewhere else, 40% of me feeling that I need to move away because it's, I mean, we, we spent five years here. We were very active people everywhere. And I, I like to go on hikes. And now every time I go on hikes, I think about where we've been. And he's not that big of a city to escape from all the memories. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's been really hard to think that I can create new memories with someone else or myself without those things coming in the foreground. Yeah, it's possible for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's easier if you're feeling called. And so you said a couple things to me. One is I felt called deep down even before we broke up. Yeah. And that this is something that I've wanted to do. Yes. And I will tell you, you will always regret not doing it. And the other thing I'm going to tell you is you can always come back. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's been my main thing is that I know I can always come back. I've made enough of a network here and I know there are plenty of people in my corner that are here that would, I could rely on it. God forbid something was to go awry in the state that I have, I've chosen. So I, I, I yeah, I, I do want to bet on myself. It's just that yes. with me that feels a little guilty towards my parents. And well, hold on a second. Your parents are grown ass adults. Yes, they are. <laughs> and they can move. They can get on an airplane. Yes. They can FaceTime you. They want you to be happy. They want you to pursue your dreams. There is nothing I would hate more than to have my kids tell me that they gave up on something they wanted to do because they felt guilty about me. Mm -hmm. After all the shit I've done to support them, they're not going to saddle their coward ass chicken shit decisions on me. Yeah, no, that resonates deeply. I know you're right. I know. I don't, I don't know what part of my smile, the inner child of me that somewhat believes that I can't go somewhere without disappointing them but I know that you're right that deep down that they want the best for me they want me to be happy and that that will and here's me. here's what you can do you can actually go to your parents and say I need to do this for myself and the only thing holding me back is my fear about you guys being upset with me so can I ask for your support in doing something that I I desperately need to do for my own growth. And I promise I can always come back. Yeah. Yeah. I think I need that reassurance for sure. Well, you can ask for it. Whether they give it to you or not is a whole nother thing. I don't know your parents. I don't know if they're going to be emotionally immature about it, but I suspect they've seen you suffer mm -hmm. and they've seen you sad and they want you to be happy. And if you tell them this is what you think you need to take this risk, to do this thing, then you need to do it. Living with regret is the worst thing in the world. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm focusing us here because I need you to accept that he broke up with you. And you haven't. Yeah. I feel like I haven't had time to. That's uh, bullshit. <laughs> I know. All you do is think about this. Every, it's gotten a lot better. I mean, I've been able to, I told myself I would be on a hiatus until I take the bar in July from men, like talking to men. And I've gotten mm -hmm. over that. I've allowed myself okay. to live and like freely talk to adult males who I find interesting or attractive and I've been using the five second rule and it's worked wonders and it's given me bountiful connections. It's just, 
I don't know, there is a part of me that is hanging on to this little piece of hope that because he was the person that I mean, everything I wanted in a person was that was him, except the fact that he didn't want me. So maybe that's well, that's enough. that's the single biggest yeah thing that you need. Yeah. Why would you want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you? Yeah, you don't. But you do. Because you think if you can win him back, it means something. Yeah. What does it mean if he comes back? That he regret his he regrets the decision that he well, What does it mean about you? Up? Oh. What does it mean about you? Probably not anything commendable. I mean, you take in someone that second can guess your worth and their and their perception of you as what you meant to them in, in your life and how I wasn't enough. I See, mean, there's a part of your value and worth that you have handed to him. Yeah. And him coming back and wanting to be with you is what you think is going to give you that piece of self-worth back. That's why you're holding on to it. Because you think there's something wrong with you or missing from you or deficient and only he can give it back to you. Yeah, we haven't even spoken since so <laughs> since July. <laughs> we I haven't Good. seen him. It's been There's nothing to say. Yeah. He said everything when he broke up with you without warning. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think you need to look back at the relationship if you're going to with a much more critical eye. Because there were signs. There are always signs. Yeah, there were absolutely signs. Especially What were the signs? Well, uh one uh, two years into our relationship, he cheated on me. Okay, and there's that, a sign. That's a sign. <laughs> uh, two, about three weeks before he broke up with me, um, he's Mormon, and I'm, I'm just, I'm Christian of general, uh -huh. and um, he had some Mormon people over and it was on a, we got in a big fight essentially. And I saw him look at me differently in that mm -hmm. time. And then on our 4th of July weekend, when he broke up with me, he was very distant. Also all of our mutual friends broke up with their girlfriends two weeks prior. So every guy in our group that Are I- Are they all Mormon? No, no, they're not. Okay. They're not, but they all broke up with their girlfriends two weeks prior. And then I was next. I was the next target to be hit. Um, or yeah. uh, captive to be released. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. He was you need to change your story. You need to change your story. He was not everything you thought you wanted. He was not. He was somebody that cheated on you that you forgave, who then started to ice you out because he felt the pressure from uh, LDS leaders, which he's allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And he did it in a really chicken shit, mean, disrespectful way. Had he sat down with you and explained from his heart the pressure he feels, how much he cares about you, how much this time is meant to you, but he just can't get past the religion, blah, blah, blah. If he had done that, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. But see, why you feel pissed, and I'd like you to get into the anger instead of the sappy doopy, oh, ba doopy day, oh, you, should I move, should I not? Fuck him. <laughs> you got to get into that mode of, I was fucking disrespected by this son of a bitch. How fucking dare he? What a chicken shit, piece of shit, traumatized, what the, I, I was dating a boy. Yeah, no, absolutely. A hundred percent. Not emotionally intelligent. Uh, definitely. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Come on, what else? 
Oh, man, it's so hard. <laughs> no, it ain't. It's only hard because you've been telling yourself a different story. Yeah. And the story that you need to tell yourself is this one. When it's not love, it's a lesson. And the lesson that he taught me is I want an actual man. I want somebody who talks about his feelings. I want somebody who is upfront with me when something's not working. I want somebody who uh, respects me to have the hard, enough to have the hard conversations. And I also learned that I am a fucking lawyer. And if I can get my ass through law school, I am an adult who wants an adult relationship with an equal. And I was dating a child and I was making excuses for him and I'm not fucking doing that again. Yeah. How about that story? I like that story. That story. I say it with love. <laughs> <laughs> that story, I, I think I'm going to keep in my back pocket. Yeah. No, I now, I, Yeah. Here's one other thing I want to say to you. We got to come up with your plan B when you bump into him. Because I have a feeling that literally within the next 48 hours, you are going to bump into him. I do too. I know. I've had this feeling for a while. Okay. So what are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, I've just thought about saying hi. And I mean, I'm in a much better headspace now. Like I, 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 this is the breakup has been one of the biggest blessings truly like it has been I the amount of relationships that I've fostered and the amount of people that I've met since then that I never would have met and their stories I never would have heard like it, it's given me a new light it's given me a new reason to to live in a new pursuit I've learned so much about myself I've I've learned how loyal I am as a friend and how many people I have in my corner. It's just, so I, I want to exert that kind of energy when I see okay. him, if I was Great. to. Yeah. Great. Okay. Like I'm um, I, if he asked me how I'm doing, I want to say I'm, I'm doing great because I am. Okay, great. But there's still that little piece. Yes. <laughs> and I want to turn that piece into something powerful for you. And it's the truth. And the reason why you can't let this go is because of how he handled it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you are a person of principle and you deserved to be treated differently. This is not about the breakup. This is not about what happened. It's about the how. Yeah. And so the way that we're going to do this, because we're going to role play, is I want you to put on your lawyer hat. Okay. 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 And I want you to say, like, I want, you're just going to try this on like you and I are shopping together because having this rehearsed will help you not get triggered because when you see the person, it will be a little bit like, oh my God. So expect a little bit of the wave, like, oh shit, shit, shit. And then you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to walk right up to him. Do not look away. Do not worry if he's with somebody even better. <laughs> you're going to walk right up and you're going to say, hey, I had a feeling I was going to bump into you. It's, it's actually really great to see you because I'm moving. Something I've always wanted to do. And I wanted to thank you. Thank you for ending it. Because I probably would be making different decisions if I were still putting you first. But I do want to tell you the way you handled it was really awful. And I deserve better. And now I feel better that I told you. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's how you, I don't know how. All you, right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, I'm, I'm him. I'm like walking and I see you and I'm like. <gasps> okay. Hey, Nick. Hi. It's great to see you. I had a yeah, feeling good I to was going to gonna bump into you recently. I mean, it's. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Yeah, and you look great. You look really great. How you thanks. doing? Thank you. I appreciate it. I just wanted to let you know I'm actually, I'm moving soon. And I, I truly wanted to thank you for, for allowing me and giving me this time to. No. No. Nope. Okay. We're going to start over. No. I want to thank you for ending it. For ending it. Okay. Because I wouldn't have. Yeah, I would not. And I needed you and, and it needed to end. 
Yeah. And I'm happy it ended. But I do have to tell you, the way you handled it, not cool. Not cool at all. I deserve better. And I hope you treat women better in the future. See you later. <laughs> all right, here we go again. I'm Nick. All right. Okay, here we go. Hey, Nick. Oh, oh hi. Hey. How's it going? Wow. Uh, everything's great. Everything's hey. really great. I, I had a feeling I'd bump into you. That's, that's really odd, but I just wanted to let you know. Um, I wanted to thank you actually for, for ending what we had. Yeah. I, yes, I, uh, I'm recently made the decision to move and wow. I would not have made this decision had we stayed together. And it's I've, after great reflection, it's been truly the biggest blessing. The way in which it was done was not acceptable. And I hope that you can do better for the women that are in your life in your future. Bye. Have a good life. Case to mi dismissed, man. He's convicted. You're the winner. That was incredible. How do you feel? It feels empowering and it feels honest. Yeah. Yeah. It, that it's... that last word is it. Because like a lot of that gotcha, and I'm just gonna say that thing where I pretend to look da da da, that doesn't work. But you're being honest because I I really feel that it's the justice piece of this that hooked you. Yeah. That that's what has kept you attached to this, that it wasn't right. And when you distinguish the relationship ending, the what from the how it ended, it gives you your power back to go, wait a minute, I was mistreated here. I need to say something. This fucking coward did this and then slinked off into the sunset? I don't think so. Right. Right. And I also love that you can see the difference between making a decision because you're weak and you don't want to bump into this loser on a hiking trail. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he should be. He should be. He's probably not hiking anywhere because he's scared to bump into you. Possibly. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Even if he has somebody new, he's going to be scared to bump into you. Because he also knows he was a coward and he disrespected you the way he did this. And so you know that you are now making a decision to move toward your power and toward your growth. And you also know that you can always come back. You can always move home. Like that's there for you forever. But I think you are going to find something in this move that you didn't even know you were seeking. And I am so excited for you. And I want to leave you with a tool. So you already located it in your heart. But the way that you um, make a decision in the future that, you know, it's kind of one of these big weighty ones is you just kind of close your eyes. And I want you to think about the two options. Do I stay in Indianapolis or do I move to this new place that I've always wanted to live? The decision that aligns and is true for you is the one that is going to feel more expansive, like that something inside you opens up. It doesn't mean it's an easy decision. It doesn't mean that there aren't things you're concerned about, but that it's going to create growth, that there's something exciting, even if it's scary about that decision, that there's some expansive energy to it. And that's how you can feel in your heart and in your gut that that is a decision that's aligned with who you are and where you're meant to go. If you are making a decision and you feel yourself shrink a little, yeah. you feel the energy go down, mm -hmm. you feel kind of instead of the expansion like this kind of contraction of energy, that's a no. It's a no. And that's why I opened up our conversation by saying, I think this is going to be a short conversation because you already know. And one other piece of advice I'm going to give you is this. When making decisions in life, always use your heart to know what the truth is for you. And that's why I knew immediately, oh, she knows she's moving. This is like not even a question. She's already knows what. 
you'll use your brain and you've got this beautiful analytical lawyer brain that's going to help you figure out that, okay, when am I doing it? How's it going to happen? Like, okay? Awesome. Pull up a seat and listen in as I give some advice and coaching to a woman named Katrina who wrote in because in the wake of a breakup, she has a very big decision to make. Isn't it true? The decision that you know is right. The one that deep down in your heart, you know, is the best and truest decision for you. It's also the one that scares the hell out of you. This coaching session is going to give me the opportunity to teach you two just critical truths about life. Number one, 